famous dancers like Isidore Duncan, Pina Bausch, Martha Graham, Yvonne Rayner, and Maurice Cunningham were modern dancers that broke new ground in defining what dance could be. But we have to remember the one who helped inspire these people, a pioneer in motion, the story of Loey Fuller. Loey was a dancer, inventor, technologist, and the first person to use colored light in dance, as well as so much more. When Loey Fuller was born outside of Chicago in 1862, the Civil War had just begun and Abraham Lincoln had just become president. Fuller was born into one of the most complicated times for the U.S. As a young child, Lowy climbed up on stage at her Sunday school, took a bow, and recited the prayer that she said every night before bed. Her mother was amazed, and this was the beginning of Lowy's career on stage as a performer. At the young age of 15, Lowy Fuller took a nine-month tour with a comedy club, as well as having performed in many other plays. As a young adult, Fuller moved to New York to pursue her career in performance. In New York, Fuller had the idea to produce a show, but it didn't find the right audience, so she moved her efforts to London. After spending some time in London, Fuller still wasn't able to find the success that she wanted there. While she was in London, a manager there recommended that she go to the United States to take a part in a play called Quack MD. She brought the costumes that she needed and went to New York. When the rehearsal began, the author of the play got an idea to add a scene in which there was a hypnotized widow. Fuller asked the electrician in the theater to put green lamps along the floor and the orchestra leader to play a subdued air. She spent a while debating what costume she should wear, but decided on a long silk and gauze rope skirt that she had been given at a dinner party back in London. She created 12 different characteristic motions and what colors they should be shown under. She then convinced the manager to watch her dance. She made herself as light as possible and began her dance. The manager loved it and showed her what music she should use for this dance and dubbed it the Serpentine. Her dance was a beautiful combination of quick, gentle movements with the long fabric combined with light shining down and above so the color of the fabric appeared as if it was constantly changing. However, other than the manager, the rest of New York did not understand why this new dance was so appealing. Fuller, still unable to find success as a dancer in New York, traveled to Paris to pitch her idea. The audiences in Paris loved it. She decided that if she was going to find success in dancing, she would find it here. So she moved to Paris in 1892 and started working in different music halls. At the time, Paris was art central with different unusual types of art everywhere. Fuller's success in Paris was immediate. Her talent in dance, with her never-before-seen vision of combining light with dance, made it so her unique art style was perfect for Paris audiences. Over Fuller's career, she worked in many music halls in Paris, one of them being the Folies Bourgères. The Folies Bourgères was a famous music hall in Paris where many well-known dancers came to fame. Fuller became the most famous dancer at the Folies Bourgères, and the majority of the posters that they made advertising had her picture on them. Fuller's new and unique style had never before been seen, and her idea of combining light and dance is used in theater today, as well as her idea to start with a dark stage, something that was never before used. It is now used on almost every stage. Her unique and creative idea of combining lighting and dance is what made her style so different. Fuller's movements made her a pioneer. She combined long fabrics with sweeping motions and with long poles to create a hypnotizing effect. 
One of Foley's dreams was to get a hold of radium to use in her dances, a very dangerous radioactive element discovered by Marie Curie. However, getting her hands on enough radium to make a costume was near impossible and would be deadly. But Fuller and Curry partnered in creating phosphorescent salts that absorb radiation from light and re emit it at a more constant, steady rate that lasts much longer. She applied the salts onto her gowns, resulting in a mesmerizing glow. She chose where her lighting technicians went and what they did, and even tapped out commands while dancing so the lighting technicians knew where to shine the light. She created a wheel which had different colored gels and plastics that would be positioned in front of the light in order to create colored light. She then had her lighting technicians control a light on a swivel with this contraption in front of it in order to animate the color changes in the lights. Fuller held many patents from the U.S. and France for lighting and stage design. Fuller's combinations of light, color, and electricity led her to be one of the most technologically advanced people of the time. Fuller had many famous people as friends and colleagues. She worked with Thomas Edison, was friends with Auguste Rodin, the famous sculptor. Stéphane Mallarmé, a famous symbolist poet, wrote, She lost the materiality of her body and became an idea while describing one of Fuller's dances. Fuller was also good friends with Princess and later Queen Maria of Romania. Fuller also had people impersonate her, pretending to be her because of the amount of fame that she had found. Also people taking her dances in style and claiming it as their own. Fuller inspired many artists, including dancers such as Isidore Duncan and artists such as Gaulet Chiré and Aure de Toulouse-Lautrec, and more recently, Taylor Swift even dedicated a performance to Laurie Fuller's art in 2018. During the First World War, Fuller devoted herself to relief work for the Allied countries and urged her fellow Americans to join the conflict on that country's side. Lowry Fuller and Marie Curie also worked to transport X-ray equipment to the edge of the battlefield. Because of this work, she won decorations from Romania, Belgium, and France. After the war, Fuller founded and taught a school in Paris with the object of teaching students dancing and improvisational techniques but she did not teach them her lighting techniques. She took the students to Egypt and on other tours as well. Jody Sparling is a dancer who uses Foley's works as an inspiration in her own dance, creating beautiful representations of what Foley's work would have looked like with color. Loie Fuller was a pioneer in modern dance and lighting because Fuller's techniques of combining colored light and dance was unheard of. Fuller's influence is more prominent than is often recognized. Without her combining colored light and dance in the way that she did, contemporary performance would not be what it is now. <laughs>